Hello my dear friends, you are on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 13th of March of 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. First we are going to start with the Kupinsk front line. The Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation reported that as a result of clashes in the vicinity of Kupinsk, the Ukrainians lost 60 soldiers and two armored vehicles, but without any changes on the ground. Now let's talk about Liman front line. The Russians are saying that as a result of clashes on this front line, the Ukrainians lost 110 soldiers, two armored vehicles and one artillery system Gvazdika. The Russians are pushing in direction of Tirny, Yampolovka, Nevska, and the Russians continue storming operation of the forest that located on the north of Siribrianka. Now let's move to Bakhmut. To Bakhmut and Donetsk front line. There are a lot of very interesting updates. As you can see, the Russian source map has been updated. Now they're showing us that the Russians control the forest lines that are located on the west from Solidar. But this is not the only places that these days are under Russian control. According to, to the many, many sources, uh, the Western sources and the Russian sources as well. During the previous 24 hours, there were very heavy clashes, not just in the, in the vicinity of Orekhov, Vasilyev, or Zelizhnyanska, but also according to the mini report of Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, as a result of during clashes, the Ukrainians managed to repulse the Russian attack in the vicinity of Minkovka. Now let's return back to the Western sources map. This map is updated. Now, this is the progress, as you can see, as you can see, the Russians managed to penetrate the Ukrainian defense orders between Zelizhnyansk and Vasilevka. They managed to develop their, their bridgehead along the MO3 road. They managed to establish control over the forest lines and forest inside this, uh, this salient, and they were attacking Minkovka. Uh, from one side, you may say that there is nothing important, but uh, as we discussed in the previous videos, the results of the battle for Bakhmut will be determined not by the clashes inside Bakhmut or not by the clashes for Bogdanovka or Ivanovska. The results of Bakhmut will be determined on the north of this bridgehead uh, as a result of battle for this northern bridgehead between Privoli, Minkovka, Zelizhnyanska and Orekhov Vasilevka. And I will repeat you one more time. If you remember, now these days the Russians managed to establish fire control over the roads that connects Chesev Yar with Bakhmut. They have established artillery control and they're attacking and shelling this area 24 hours per day. And the only problem that the Russians have is the Ukrainian counter artillery duels. And the Ukrainians do have possibilities to attack the Russians, but the main bridgehead that the Ukrainians are able to use for these purposes is the northern bridge at exactly this area. So if the Russians want to establish 100% control, fire control over this area, they need to push the Ukrainian artillery systems as far as possible. So uh, they need to create such a situation when the Ukrainians will be forced to use, let's say, HIMARS or M777 artillery systems with Excalibur shells, so very expensive Western weapon. In this case, of course, the Ukrainians will be able to create some something like artillery duels with the Russians, but also in this case they will be forced to discover their positions, and of course the Russians will start hunting for this Western weapon. Anyway, the Ukrainians is in a very bad and critical situation. So, now let's update this area according to information we have. So, the Russians uh, have uh, reached the outskirts of Zelizhnyanska. That means that this town is in the gray zone and I believe that within the next uh, 24 or 48 hours this town will be taken by the Russians. Also, the, we during the previous 24 hours we got updates that the Russians, there, there is a very, there was and there is a very heavy clashes inside the Varekhov Vasilevka that the Russians managed to establish control of more than 50% of this village and now they're doing something like clearing operation of this town and uh, today according to the Minister, Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, the, the Ukrainians managed to repulse the Russians attack in the village by the name of Minkovka. So, as you can see, the Russians uh, are trying to develop to the north in direction of Slavyansk, exactly in direction of the area where the Ukrainians are trying to accumulate their forces before the Ukrainian greatest deblocate the operation. So, as you can see, the Russians took a decision not to wait and to attack the first. 
And the question is why the, the Russians took, did take a decision to attack, the, to be the first in this operation. Why didn't they took, take a decision to prepare the bridge, how to establish their positions? And the first answer is, as we discussed in the beginning, that uh, the most important for the Russians is to push the Ukraine artillery as far as possible from Bakhmut and from the Russian artillery position and just to secure the Russian artillery just to secure and anyway in a month in two months in uh, in a two weeks or something like this the russians with artillery attacks will be able to reduce the entire ukrainian army inside bakhmut uh, the losses is going to be very heavy and this is going not be not just the losses and defeat this is going to be a disaster but there is another the second thing the second reason why the russians started their pushing in direction of slavensk and the main thing and the most important thing Thing is that at least there are two options the first one and the most obvious is that the russians by taking zelizniansk and by taking minkovka will be able to block the ukrainian forces that located between these rivers so this is like a small bridge hat and if you take a look uh, if you know and if you are able to take a look at uh, deployment map, you're going to see that there are a lot of tank brigades in this area. A lot of tank forces are deployed in this area. And by blocking these brigades, uh, let's say from Minkovka to Saka Vanceti, these br tank brigades will be encircled because uh, there is a lot, there, there are fields of very poor quality of the ground and there are just one possible road that Ukrainians are able to, be, to use if they want to step back with tanks, with mech nice brigade from this bridge hat so for now we can say that there is another small operational encirclement of this bridge hat because the russians have already established fire control over this area and the situation for these tank these tanks brigade that located in this area is very poor very bad and the russians i believe will try to develop this situation and will try to reduce the ukrainian mechanized and tanks brigade as much as possible furthermore if the russians are able to develop their bridgehead in direction of minkovka then they will be able to reduce the possible road that ukrainians are able to use before upcoming greatest of deblocade operations this is going to be the only road that ukrainians are able to use for deblocade fields and a road mo3 because there is a river barrier uh, they can use this road as well but uh, they have already some brigades in this area and also the russians have already established fire control over this bridge so as you can see the uh, configuration is not so nice and good for the ukrainians because there are no chances for them to start any offensive operation using this short and uh, not so wide road for attack because they will be reduced they are no longer able to use fields or they will have to war will be forced to wait uh, before the weather is going to become nice better and the ground the quality is the quality of ground becomes better and then they can attack and it will happen in the neck maybe in a month not like but not within this week's week or the next week as well uh, another important thing and the most important thing the third one one more time artillery uh, the uh, the shorten of the possible road for the ukrainian attack and the most important thing that if the russians are able to take control over the zelizniansk kamenkovka areha vasilevk exactly what are they, they're doing right now they will be able to move closer to slavensk their artillery system and they will be able to deploy their artillery system somewhere in the vicinity of the bow vasilevka on the west north from paraskovka in this area and from these positions the russians will be able to establish fire control over this bridge that located this bridge so this is bridge and to tell the truth at least uh when talking about the battle for the northern bridge hat of bakhmut this area is one of the most important area in this at this stage of special operation at this stage of storming of bakhmut at the at this stage of the battle for northern bridgehead this area the most important let's return to the, the western russian sources map this is the area this is the bridge and this is the channel that is the channel and uh, this is the bridge and if you take a look at this map you're gonna see that this is the only area where the ukrainians are able using this area the ukrainians are able to move their tanks armored vehicles mechanized brigade to the north of bakhmut 
if the Russians are able to establish control over this small road or to damage this bridge using artillery, the Ukrainians will be forced to use to use the roads that goes from Slavinsk to Nikolaevka, then to Araya Alexandrovka, and only after that somewhere to the north. So as you can see, the logistic um, there are, there are going to be a lot of logistics problem with this. Of course, the quality of the northern road is worse than the MO3 road, and uh, this is not very good as you, as you can see. So. The Russians are moving exactly to this bridge, and this is their main goal. Furthermore, uh, by establishing control over this bridge, they will completely ruin the Ukrainian the Ukrainians' plans about upcoming greatest deblocade operation of Bakhmut. So, one more time, disaster for the Ukrainians continues, and now there is a most important part, the battle for Northern Bridgehead. And who wins the battle for Northern Bridgehead of Bakhmut is going to win maybe not just the battle for Bakhmut. The part, this part, this site is going to be win maybe the entire battle for Chasafiar, Bakhmut and Siversk Bridgehead. So this is about Donetsk or Donbass front, Donetsk front line. The, the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation reported that as a result of clashes during the previous 24 hours, the Ukrainians lost 190 soldiers, 19 armored vehicles, including 14 light vehicles and one artillery system stab B. As you can see, during the previous days, we see that the level of losses among the Ukrainian artillery system systems uh, have been reduced and for example, today they lost one artillery system, yesterday they lost another one system, the day before yesterday just two artillery systems, so the level is not very high, one or two artillery systems per day, and that means a lot. First of all, the Ukrainians understand that they're in a very bad position, that they can't help or support the Ukrainians in Bakhmut, and they don't want to discover their position, and they're trying to find a solution how to use their artillery systems effectively. When talking about the losses among the armored vehicles, as you can see, the level of losses have been increased, 19, 19 armored vehicles in comparison with 11 uh, for, to, for yesterday and 9 for the day before yesterday. So the Russians restored the pressure restore the pressure they calculated everything they made all kind of projections they could and they took a decision to attack in the right direction in direction of the bridge that located between Slavensk and Bakhmut as you can see there are no changes on the ground inside Bakhmut the Russians are pushing all over the front line some sources are saying that the Russians entered the industrial zone in the north there are a lot of mines in this area and the deep the depth of these mines is about 300 meters and the Russians are saying that the Ukrainians are, are is hidden even inside of these uh, deep mines so it's a very complicated process to push the Ukrainians from this bridgehead but anyway the Russians are pushing now let's move to the south and let's talk about Avdiivka because as you can see the western sources map have been has been updated as well and now this map shows the progress that we discussed yesterday just with one important difference that according to the Russians they established control over Visole so as you can see uh, the Russians continue encirclement of this town from the north uh, the, uh, the Russians establish 100% sure fortification and position inside of Krasnogorovka. Furthermore, as you can see, they have a very nice supply road. They have a road, not just a spring poor quality ground, but normal roads that they are able to use to supply and support the forces in Novobakhmutovka, Novoselovka, Druga, and so on. And this stage, the only thing they need is to complete clearing of Krasnogorovka, Visola and Kamyank. I believe it will take another week or maybe a week and a half. And after that, we can say about, let's say, a part, partial, uh, partial operational encirclement of Avdiivka from the north. Very difficult, complicated situation for both sides. We can find in the south of Avdiivka, in the vicinity of Toninka, Severna, Vadiana. Uh, the thing is that this is to storm this area is much more difficult than to storm the northern part of Avdiivka because um, the Ukrainians uh, the level of fortification on the north is less than the level of fortification on the south in the vicinity of Pieski. Furthermore this is an open area and of course the Ukrainians are able to attack the Russians from any side but anyway the Russians continue storming process uh, I believe maybe that the um, it will take 
um, more time for the Russians to establish control over the bridgehead between Severna, Toninka, and let's say till uh, Pervomaisk. It will take more time, but anyway, the Russians are going to continue movements uh, while the Ukrainians don't understand what they should do uh, during in Bakhmut operation. Something tells me that maybe uh, this week the Ukrainians will take a decision to not to do anything with the blockade because they understand the progress and the problem with this bridge and with the northern bridgehead and they will change their focus on Avdiivka and they will try to stop the collapsing and disaster in Avdiivka as well. One more time, the Ukrainians lost 190 soldiers, 19 armored vehicles and one artillery system in this area. Now let's move to the south. Uh, there are no changes in Marinka bridgehead, there are no changes in uh, Uglidar bridgehead. The Russians continue shelling this area, continue trying hunt, continue hunting process, continue duels and so on, but without any changes on the ground. I believe that these days the Russians are completely concentrated on this uh, side of this front line in Avdiivka. Maybe as soon as they are able to to get some position, to get some, let's say, stable progress and to improve their position so they understand that the Ukrainians are no longer to push them back, maybe the Russians will change their focus. Furthermore, uh, if you remember many, many videos ago, I uh, discussed about Bakh Bakhmut and we came to conclusion that the Russians would not start any offensive operation before they get some progress in Bakhmut. And uh, uh, just... Uh, um, um, as, and as we see, as soon as the Russians establish a very powerful position on the north and create operational or even tactical encirclement of Bakhmut, exactly at this moment the Russians started another offensive operation in the direction of Avdiivka. I believe that they are going to use the same pattern uh, in the vicinity of Avdiivka as soon as they are able to establish some uh, stable bridgehead in this area, they will try to open and make the third attack. As we discussed, this is not the final attack. They're going to be the third very powerful attack and the third one is going to be the the most important, the most powerful and the main goal of the third attack is to collapse the entire Ukrainian army, not even on the tactical or operational level, on a strategical level. For now, I, I believe that the battle for Avdiivka will take another month or even, or even up to two months to do all these things with Krasnogorovka, Novobakhmutovka, Kamyanka, and then from the south, Severna, Toninka, and Orlovka. And after that, maybe the Russians will make another attempt. Maybe even Nuglidar, who knows? Something tells me they are going to do this somewhere in Liman front line. Maybe they were going to do the, both these directions, these roads. Uh, when talking about South Donetsk area, the Russians are saying that as a result of clashes, artillery duels in this area, the Ukrainians lost 60 soldiers, 2 armored vehicles and 2 artillery systems, D-20 and D-30 Howitzer, without any progress on the ground. Let's talk about Kherson. The more updates are coming from this area. The Russians are saying that as a result of artillery duels, as as a result, let's say, let's call it not even as a result of artillery duels. I believe we should call this as a result of successful spy network uh, job in this area that the Russian spies do, do did during the first 24 hours. The Russians managed to discover and destroy 20 and uh, reduce the Ukrainian army in 20 manpower, 5 armored vehicles and 2 artillery systems, Akatsa and Stabi. And that's it for today. Military Summer Channel reminds you can the many violence in Ukraine. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel, put your likes, join my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.